Good morning, dear hearts. We're on lesson 264, and uh, we are in the fifth relevant special central thought of part two of the workbook, What is the Body? Something we all have some familiarity with. And I am going to start, as I have been, by reading uh, the first, now the first four paragraphs of that central thought. So what is the body? The body is a fence, a defense, a grief fence that the Son of God imagines, imagines he's built to separate parts of his self from other parts. Well, what are those other parts? Those other parts are the rest of the sonship, all of the different bodies that I see, all of the different beings that I look out and believe are there. I want to separate myself from them. This is what separation is. It isn't only separation from us to God, but it is also separation from us to everyone else. Although the ego would say everybody else. Okay, so it is within this fence that this the Son of God thinks he lives to die as it decays and crumbles. For within this fence, he believes that he is safe from love, that love cannot come into this fence, this area that I have cordoned off, because this area that I have cordoned off, this body, is filled with fear, birds outside, um, is filled with fear. And love and fear will not coexist. They will not be in each other's company because each one doesn't believe that the other is real. And one of that is actually true. Um, identifying with his safety, he regards himself as what his safety is, the body. How else could he be certain he remains within the body keeping love outside. Love is outside. Sin, fear is within. The body will not stay, yet this he sees as double safety, for the Son of God's impermanence is proof that his fences work and do the task his mind assigns to them to prove, prove that the Son of God is not the Son of God that we could not possibly be an extension from our Father's mind. Because if we were, we would not be bodies. We would know ourselves to be timeless and eternal and everlasting. We would know ourselves to be spirit and not flesh and bone. For if his oneness still remained untouched, who could attack and who could be attacked? Who could be victor? Who could be his prey? who could be victim, who the murderer. And if he did not die, if the Son of God did not die, what proof is there that God's eternal Son can be destroyed? So we must perish in order for the ego mind to say, I'm right, and which is all that the ego really wants to do. Would you prefer to be right or happy? Well, we know the ego's response to that. The body is a dream. It's an illusion. It is not real. But like other dreams, it sometimes seems to picture happiness, but quite can quite suddenly revert to fear where every dream is born. See, here again is the seek but do not find. Well, we think we find for just a short amount of time, but every pleasure will turn into pain under the guise and the guidance of the ego. For only love creates in truth, and truth can never fear. Made to be fearful, must this body serve the purpose given it? But, good news, good news sentence. We can change the purpose that the body will obey by changing what we think that it is for. And that is turning this body over instead of being a, a tool of the ego to... in endure fear and pain and anger and suffering, we turn this body over to the Holy Spirit for it to now be used as a tool for healing the mind of the Son of God. The body is the means by which God's Son returns to sanity with the healed mind. Though it was made, the, uh, the body was made to fence him into hell without escape, yet has the goal of heaven been exchanged for the purpose of hell. 
the Son of God extends his hand, remember that, to reach his brother and to help him walk along the road with him. Now is the body holy. Now it serves to heal the mind that it was made to kill. Extend his hand. This is um, in today's lesson, which happens to be 264. If I didn't say it, please subscribe. I don't remember that I did. Uh, get all caught up in the lessons. Uh, so today's lesson, I am surrounded. I'm surrounded by the love of God. What a wonderful, beautiful thought. And yet again, as I've said so many times, repetitive because we have had other lessons, many other lessons. And I'll only mention a few that also give us this awareness that indeed we are surrounded by the love of God. We are sustained by the love of God. I am surrounded by the love of God. Father, this is lovely. This is the prayer portion. Father, you stand before me and behind, beside me in the place I see myself and everywhere I go, everywhere I go, God goes with me wherever I go. God is in everything I see. God is everywhere. There is no place where God is not. You are in all things that I look upon, the sounds I hear in every hand that reaches for my own. Every hand that reaches for my own. The Son of God extends his hand to reach his brother and to help him walk along the road with him. In you, Father, in you, time disappears and place becomes a meaningless belief. Time and space are under God's rule, not ours. So uh, for what surrounds your son and keeps him safe is love itself. And love is real and there is nothing else. God is everywhere and in everything. And everywhere that God is, love is. So for what surrounds your son and keeps him safe is love itself. And it has no opposite, as we've mentioned many times. There is no source but this, and nothing is that does not share his holiness that stands beyond your one creation or without the love which holds all things within itself. All things are together within the mind of God. And within the mind of God, there is love that holds all things together. Yesterday's lesson in the prayer, Father, your mind created all that is. Your spirit entered into it. Your love gave life to it. All of this is true. God's love is what has given us life and all living things as well. Um, there is no source but this, and nothing is that does not share its holiness that stands beyond your one creation or without the love which holds all things within itself. I just felt I needed to read it again. Father, your son is like yourself. I, we are exactly like you are. Father, I am me, and we are we, and we are all one. So we come to you in your own name today. I call upon God's name and on my own to be at peace within your everlasting love. Um, not too long ago, we had the lesson, God is with me. I live and move in him. And I added and breathe. I live and move and breathe in God. And that is where I know that I am real, where I know that I am being my true self, which I am meant to be. I am meant to know. So th there's, again, there's so many lessons in my holiness. My holiness envelops everything I see. Uh, there are so many times throughout this course in the repetitiveness of it that we are given this message that we are surrounded by the love of God. The love of God is everything I want. There is no thing else that I really want. And with the peace of God, I have indeed the love of God. The second part, one other thing, and there's no love but God's. There's no love but God's, okay? It is God's love is true and real and all-encompassing. 
God's love will save this world, which we are here to do. <laughs> Second part tells us that um, because it will bring us, us, our minds back into the wholeness that we have left behind when we believed that we had separated. Um, my brothers, join with me in this today. This is salvation's prayer. You know, salvation of the world depends on me, no pressure. Must we not join in what will save the world along with us? God has given us the gift of salvation, which of course is forgiveness. And this is what will save the world. The way to God is through forgiveness here. There's no other way. So we want to save this world so that it will be transformed and translated into peace, which is what we all choose to have. There's no one who says, no, I don't want peace. We all want peace. And just one other thing. Oh, and God's peace and joy are mine. There you go. Um, when we extend our hand to our brother, remember that every hand we hold, without exception, as we extend our hand to another, that other being, we might see them as with a name that we're familiar with, but in truth, they are simply a stand-in to use a theatrical term. They are simply a stand-in for our brother and our father. So we extend our hand to hold our father's hand, to hold our brother's hand, and we identify with love and we are safe. And that's it for today, and I hope it helped. Um, please like, please share, please subscribe, please comment, please smile. Please breathe <laughs> and please be here tomorrow. Namaste.